Hey, hey, hey. I've got a new sh- um, place that I'm taping from. I'm taping from home because I was having issues at school, Wi-Fi issues. So, got a new location, which is apropos given that we are starting a new chapter, confidence intervals. But let's start off with the basics. Now, your first question might be, what's a confidence interval in the first place? But before we do that, let's talk about what our objective is going to be. To interpret a confidence interval in context, to interpret a um, confidence level, to determine a point estimate and a margin of error for the confidence interval. But what is a confidence interval? As we look up here, a confidence interval is... We've got our boundaries. We've talked about before confidence intervals in a slightly different way, talking about standard deviation, talking about the little wiggle room, talking about if I'm looking at um, a 12-ounce can of soda, there is no way that every can that's uh, manufactured, let's say it's Coca-Cola Bottling Company, that every can of Coke that they manufacture is exactly 12 ounces. That's not going to happen. We do know they have an acceptable norm, and they have a low end and a high end, just like standard deviation. But the difference is on this one is that we're going to be coming up with our acceptable low and high. When we really aren't 100% sure always about what the population mean is. So let's turn to our notes. Now confidence intervals are used in a couple of ways. Okay, for, our, for us right now, we use it to estimate an unknown parameter. Okay, and CI is another representation for the word confidence interval. So this is how we're going to be using it. That's the whole idea behind it. But is that reasonable? Well, not really. Because when it comes to manufacturing, they know what their expectations are. Analogy that I can give you is my S7. My battery life on my S7 is 17 hours and 42 minutes. Does that mean that every battery that I... Um, every battery, every S7 is 17 hours and 42 minutes, approximately 18 hours? The answer is no. But that's what their expectations are. And that's what a confidence interval is going to give us. It's going to give us a margin of acceptability, kind of like a standard deviation, and we'll see how that connects. But why do we use it? We use it for statistical inference. Okay? And remember, for statistical inference, we're going to have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of samples. Many, 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 many samples. And based on those many samples, we can make conjecture about the entire population. Because we know, as I talk about another potential scenario, every bottle of Kirkland water, which is supposed to be 16.9 fluid ounces, it is not 16.9 fluid ounces. But we can say, after getting enough samples, that if that if one set of samples, in those cases, how many is in that case? 40 of them? Okay. On average, they're like 16.8 ounces. Okay. Then I take another case that has 40 bottles in it. Okay. That one is um, 17 um, ounces. So if I have enough random samples, I can make a conjecture about the entire population. But what if, like you see right here, I don't know the population parameter. Situations I gave you, I didn't. I mean, I, I did, I'm sorry. I gave you what the 12 ounce cans, that was the expectation for the Coke Cola bottle company. I gave the 16.9 ounce, that's the expectation for um, Kirkland, um, the water. Um, the 17 hours and 42 minutes, I got that off the internet, so who knows exactly how accurate that is. But here, the idea of a point estimator. A point estimator, we, it is literally the sample information, the mean, 
the proportion, the standard deviation of a sample. And we have many random samples, and I can use that to estimate the population parameter. So this is what I was saying for our purposes. It's like, what exactly um, is our parameter? Well, in this case, it's going to be considered unknown. And we've already established, like I said earlier, is that always the case with well, manufacturing? Wouldn't that kind of be scary if they didn't know what their expectations were? They go, oh, here's a bunch of samples. Oh, here's my samples. Let's say I like this, so therefore I'm going to say it must be true of the entire population. No, 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 no. That's working backwards. But we're doing this um, in this um, direction just to help us make sense of what a confidence interval is. Now let's talk about a point estimate. A point estimate is actually the value itself, the value of the estimator. So when I, the analogies that I was giving before, average can um, in terms of the samples. So um, now let's go back to the water. With the water, the mu would be 16.9. Fluid ounces, but the the average for the sample, let's face it, it could have been sixteen point nine nine. Okay, that would be considered the value of the point um estimate estimator. So the point estimator generically is the statistic. The point estimate itself is the actual value. And it is called the point estimate estimator for the population. So here, this would be of this sample, of that one sample. Then we could have another sample, let's face it, that is um, 16.01. And then a third sample, which could be 16.55. Now remember, in this scenario, I said that we didn't know the parameter. So we can, so based on these, we can say, take an average of these, and then we can say, well, it must be true of the entire population. But when it comes to confidence intervals, we're going to use all of this information and then see what we can get from it. Okay, I'm having issues with the um, lighting and the quality of the print, but I'm just going to keep going because I've been working on this way too long. Okay, let's just jump into an example of a point estimate. Um, and before we do that, I almost forgot about this little tidbit. Statistical estimation helps us to determine how close that x-bar is to the true mean value. So in this case, how true x-bar is to mu, or how close p hat is to p when that's applicable. So let's jump down, read number one, don't forget about reading the directions because they want us to determine the point estimator. Now go ahead and put that data into your calculator and once you put that data into your calculator you're gonna go with your first vars, okay and you're going to get information. So once you put it into the calculator, you've got your mean of this particular sample to be 30.35. Well, that's your point estimator. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's just new terminology. Now, next, they want us to find the variance. Remember, this is the variance. So look down to your standard deviation where it was, and then square it. Now we've got our variance. And when it comes to problem number three, it's the same idea. We're talking about here we've got 36 out of the 50. So that's our p hat, and here's another point estimate. And remember, well, don't forget, you can always go online and click on that play button. But when it comes to this idea, 
let's take ourselves back to chapter 7. We had many samples, but of this one sample, we're using this one sample as a point estimate. And we're using this one sample to make a conjecture about the entire population. And we know that's not very good because it's one sample. But for now, just go with it. Now let's continue looking at number four. Okay, so we're asking right here the same thing, to find a point estimate. Now, we have 19 out of the SRS, which is the 172. Okay, so we're just going to do the math, and we find that to be 11%. So this is the thing. We talked about the mean. We talked about the variance. We talked about the... Um, proportion. All of these are of the sample. And all we did is do the math, but we got new terms now. Our new term is yes, these are the point estimators. And yes, with these point estimators, we can make a conjecture about the entire population. Now when we're doing this, we're using this information to help us with their confidence interval. Because what the confidence interval does, it gives us an interval of reasonable or plausible values for the parameter. So, like, I, like I've spoken about in terms of the 12 ounce cans of soda, everything's not going to be 12 ounces that come off the manufacturing line. But what is their area of accept, reasonable area of acceptability? Well, is it 11.5 um, to 12.5? It seems kind of high, but I did look it up, and we're going to be discussing it a little later. Now, we're just going to be talking about terms, so for a few, you're going to be a tad confused, and I understand. Okay, now, I'm just going to jump into a problem. I'm just going to jump into showing you something. I'm going to show you the formula for this, and the reason I'm showing you the formula is so hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. You've got your point estimate. We call that, we spoke about that a minute ago. And then it's going to be plus or minus here, your margin of error. Well, doesn't that kind of look like one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean? Yes, it does. It is a little bit more than that. We'll find out, find that out in a few. Okay, but what is our um, level C? What is it? Well, it gives us an interval of, of reasonable and plausible values, like I said before. Okay? And what does our level C have to do with this? Our level C has to do with, it kind of equates to the number of standard deviations within the mean. So, here, if I'm talking about the level C, and I'm using two standard deviations within the mean, well, my level C is going to be 95%. And we're going to be a lot more specific on how that's calculated in a few. Now I mentioned here the idea of margin of error. And I said that it's like a standard deviation. And standard deviation is a part of the margin of error, um, but it is a little bit more. But as I look at this right here, what is the margin of error? Well, look at the math right here. The margin of error is the diff difference between the point estimate and the true parameter. So here, here is the point estimate. And the true parameter, we're talking about low end versus high end. Why is it important for us to have a margin of error? because we want to see how close we think we are how close our guess is based on the variable estimate so it's that sample and then going up higher and then going down lower So. 
So I mentioned this to you earlier. What is a confidence interval? And I need to cross that out. The confidence interval is the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. The level C is how confident we are that we have captured the mean, the true mean in our sample. And I know that that would make a lot of sense. It's just going to start to make sense as we do more and more examples. Right now, it's like, Yarbrough, what are you talking about? And I totally get it. But before we go to that part here, I just want to jump to page three of the notes. And the reason I want to jump to page three is because I need you to have an idea of what this is all about. Please note here, we've got a bell curve, and here's the true mean. So this is one sample, this is a second sample, this is a third sample, a fourth sample. Within all of those samples, we have the lowest value, the highest value. So if we're talking about bottled water, okay, we're talking about the company is right here the 16.9 ounces and for the sample one that I've got right here the low end looks like it may be let's make it 16.3 and then the high end let's make it 17.1 that's what this represents, but the average within this set of samples right here is a little less than 16.9. Now let's look at the second group. The second group, now please remember, mu is still 16.9. But with mu being 16.9, here, this second um, group, so I'll call it G2, we have... It looks like the mean is, well, the, the lowest value of that group, I should say, is maybe 16.1. The highest looks like is 17.01. And then it looks like of this particular group, the mean is 16.8. And I said this one up here was 16 point, I didn't say it, but I'm making it 16.85. Now, this is what this is all about. This is saying to you, my confidence interval, low end, high end. And that inside of that, that true mean, which is this right here, is captured. Because I'm saying... There's no way that every bottle I'm going to manufacture is going to be exactly 16.9. But within those samples of case of 44, so remember here this is a case, I'm wrong, a case of 40 bottles of water. The lowest amount of fluid ounces in this group is 16.3. The highest is 17.1. The average is 16.85. This right here is equivalent to a conf this is a confidence interval for that first group. Here, here's your confidence interval for the second group, and so forth and so on. So I'm going to stop now, and the next video we're going to be doing some interpretations.